afternoon, South Africa. Welcome to Afternoon Express. I hope you had a fabulous weekend. Uh, happy to be here this Monday. Yeah. How are you? I'm so good. I did something crazy this weekend, and yeah. I think for the first time in my adult life, I built a fort in my lounge and you I slept in it. Fort. Yes, I felt like it was time to be a kid again, to play around a little bit, and I oh built a little gosh. fort. How cool. My boys built forts all the time. I should come and have a sleepover. <laughs> this should be fun. I'm going to be invited to Bonnie's house for a sleepover, no longer for wine. It'll be for super fort building. Dope. That is cool. <laughs> did you have a good weekend? Yeah, I did. Thank you. Good. Yeah. I'm glad. So nothing gets the week off to a good start, better than some live jams. And today we're joined by one of South Africa's most respected dance music acts. Good luck, ladies and gents. It's been a while since they've joined us on the show and I'm very excited to catch up with them. Absolutely. And we sit down with seasoned theatre actress Dorothy Ann Gold, who's currently starring in a new production at the Baxter in Cape Town called The Year of Magical Thinking. Oh, she is phenomenal. Plus, she we is. have multi-award winning performance artist uh, Tuma Sopotela in the loft with us today. She recently returned from Grahamstown, where she performed a special piece that was created specifically for the National Arts Festival. And it's another edition of Mommy Mondays, and today we're looking at aftercare programs and the crucial role that they play in a child's upbringing and development. Should be an interesting conversation. Up first, however, as we mentioned, Electronic Trio Good Luck uh, are known for putting together one of South Africa's most energetic live performances. And last year, they earned themselves a Sama for Best Pop Album. Recently, they launched a new single called Be Yourself, and they're about to head off to Europe for their first ever headliner tour. Yes. Nothing terrified or compromised or living in the midnight sun. I asked her honestly how she keeps the shimmer that was in her eye. Or find the energy to let us free and never let a moment by. She said, Be yourself. Ben and Jules, welcome back to Afternoon oh, Express, yeah. guys. Oh, what a dope track. It just makes you want to dance the whole time. <laughs> That's been and you so guys, cool. yeah, you started a hashtag called Be Yourself Dance Challenge, right? Yes, yes, yes. And what has been the response? What kind of dance stuff did you get coming at you? Oh, we got a whole lot of crazy videos. <laughs> like, you know, I think the whole premise of, this, of the song is just to let people sort of um, not worry about mm. being the weirdness that is themselves. Yeah. And uh, so the dance challenge was, was wild. There were a lot of crazy videos. Never allow people to be their true selves ever and then make them film it. Like, what were you expecting? No, it you was know? beautiful. It was a lovely thing. Like, I mean, you can see a couple of them up oh, there. Oh, that's yeah. brilliant. Like, it was, really, it was a really cool and special way for yeah. just sort of like us to connect with our yeah. fans and also just to sort of remind everyone that, you know, it, it's, it's okay to be a little weird. It's okay yeah. to be weird. It's and actually yeah. feel weird. It's not okay. Yeah. It's fine. Yeah. Yeah. It's good. I mean, when we wrote the song, it was literally like, calling to to what's been happening on social media and everyone yeah. just wanting to be like everybody else and feeling mm. pressurized and losing their own identity and mm. i think we need to just hold on to to what's unique about ourselves exactly. and absolutely and we yeah. you guys to be quite playful people in any case i always yeah. watch your insta stories on instagram i know jules and matt are always behind those two ben coral gets teased all the time yeah. but you guys are quite playful people in any case and yeah. the music video just kind of lent into that as well yeah. such a cool video I think, what, I think what's special about the music video is that they are not actors they are all yeah. just normal people like we got our, our technician that was doing like the main the skinny jump guy. Yeah, the yeah. skinny jump guy. Yeah. <laughs> so that's what made it so special. You know? Yeah, it was yeah. such a cool experience yeah. for to watch that whole video happen, to watch you guys expand into the space. You collaborated with an international sort of producer as well yes. like, on this track. So tell us about that. Yes, we did. Uh, we were in the Netherlands and mm. we got into studio with an incredible artist called Boris Smith. Mm. And together, Ben and him produced the, the, the track that you heard. And as soon as I heard that, that song sure. taking shape, I was like, we have to yeah. make this special because it's a beautiful piece of music. And, and I went outside and penned the lyrics. And I think it's kind of, it's come together really, really nicely. Yeah. You know? um, yeah. You guys have had quite a, a special year. Mm. And yeah. I think it couldn't have happened to a more deserving band. You guys are so down to earth oh, and you're you. so real. Um, <laughs> but you're going to headline your first European tour this year. Yeah. 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 Very, very yeah. Guys, that's huge. That's <laughs> huge. Be more excited. No. I know, we like I mean, it's, that. It's nerve wracking though. I mean, it's, it's all off the back. So be yourself actually just, uh, Boris, who is who's based in the Netherlands, he had a friend who took it to radio um, out there just sort of randomly. Um, and the next thing we knew, we started getting these phone calls, like the song's playing all over the airwaves in, mm. in the Netherlands. And then it just started exploding exponentially. Mm. Um, and all the radio stations have actually picked it up now. Yeah. And it's charting on Slam FM, which is like wow. the biggest radio station out there. Yeah. And, and as a consequence, we, our management were like, listen, guys, we've got to go over and 
and do a show. So we've 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 booked a venue. Mm. Um, yeah. it's, it's it's a big venue. It's a very <laughs> big venue. It's a big venue. <laughs> it's awesome. It's a big venue. Um, and we've um, got we got to fill it. So. Yeah. And this is significant. Why? Because South African artists who perhaps want to go and uh, do a European tour, want to be overseas. Why is this tour so significant for a group like yours? Because I think we're, we're being watched closely. Um, you know, when you when you go over and perform at a festival, the people mm. they're ready that they're going to enjoy it or they're not going to enjoy it. But when you're actually headlining and promoting your own show, you're mm. literally putting a calling out to say, "Hey, anyone who likes our music, come and watch our concert." And that mm. it's it's not an easy thing to do in this day and age. You know, so we rely on the support of our fans that we've created in the territory, but also our fans in South Africa to spread the word mm. to their friends and families and their new locations. So we're also playing in London as well wow. on the third of um, the night before on the third of. August at That's the garage. Incredible. Yeah, so it's it's really exciting. It's, it's a wild trip. It really yeah. is. Yeah. <laughs> well, one thing that's really heartwarming um, is your involvement with. A uh, developmental projects and you guys um, recently did a tour, yeah. um, a show for our hom homeless community in Cape Town. Yeah. How did that go? I heard wonderful things about it. Uh, if I'm honest, it was probably one of like the best shows that we've done in a while. Really? Because just the crowd response and they were singing all the lyrics and I think the most special moment was the week afterwards I went for a cycle uh, around town and stuff and they all like all the people that were they like remember. yeah they all remember they were like hey lucky I was like <laughs> hey, what's up buddy <laughs> yeah, yeah so that was really cool it's a, it's a very cool initiative it's organized by um, a, super troopers, by super troopers yeah. who are uh, sort of a, a, an organization that helps to feed the homeless and they just sort of we know the one guy who, who helps them out a really amazing chef called Evan and uh, he gave us a shout and he was like listen come and jam like mm. we're, we're doing this like this crazy yeah. like special lunch for everyone. Mm. We'd love to have some entertainment. We were like, okay, lovely. Totally, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It was it, it was, was it was crazy, but it got, was amazing. I think we got more out of it than mm. they potentially yeah. did. But I think that leads into yeah. the kind of conversation that needs to be had about, you know, a lot of artists are afraid to do shows like that because yeah. it feels like you're coming in to make someone's mm. day for a day and you disappear again and these yeah. people still stay in the situation yeah, in their lives. Yeah. I mean, what has been your experience of, of trying to overcome homelessness in, in, in the Cape or just experiencing people as your perception changed? You know, I think, well, first of all, just to, to backtrack a little bit, like I think the connection is what's really important, mm. you know? a lot of people they, they're so scared to connect with people that are different from them yeah. and this is just being able to be on and hug and like be in the same space and not be scared of each other that first of all is the first step mm. and then from there you know you can do what you can and we yeah. obviously we're consistently trying to get our fans to get more involved because mm. all it, it's just about understanding and loving each other yeah. and interacting treating and each other from, like human beings exactly yeah. and then from there opportunities for everyone will arise mm. absolutely you're so that. right yeah well, thank you so much. Good luck. Thank you. Good yeah. luck, good luck. <laughs> yeah, you guys perform at the end of the show, so it's going to be a great yes, energetic performance. Yes, we can't wait. The we song has been like going bopping up and down our charts on the radio station <laughs> that I, I present on. So oh, looking yay. forward to seeing it continue to climb in South Africa and now thank hopefully you. abroad as well. We really, really are proud yeah. of you. Don't to Don't leave us. Don't yeah. leave us. Oh, yeah. never. Yeah. Really the kids home. <laughs> <laughs> now, good luck. We'll be back with us later in the show to perform their new single, V Yourself, that is climbing charts around the world. Indeed. After the break, we step onto the theatre stage with seasoned actress Dorothy Ann Gould. Uh, who stars in a new production at the Baxter called The Year of Magical Thinking. Stay mm -hmm. tuned.
Welcome back. Are you? <laughs> oh, I'm having a back. nap. Welcome back <laughs> to Afternoon <laughs> Express. It's a Monday. I'm still in sleep mode from the weekend. I told you, I built a fourth and I slept oh, in no. it. I'm still there. A veteran performer, one of my favorite actresses, mm. Dorothy Ann Gold, has won more awards in her stage and TV career than most artists have appeared in altogether. Indeed. So with almost 20 local and international awards behind her name and more than 200 productions, she's one of South Africa's most decorated actors. Currently, she can be seen at the Baxter Theatre uh, in a show called The Year of Magic thinking and right now on afternoon express welcome hello thank you wow it's so it's such an honor to have you mm. here i mean from oh, from the first day i walked into your house one day when i when i asked you to come to to coach me i was getting ready for an audition and i remember just standing there thinking Oh my, oh my gosh, gosh, this woman, I've seen her Ooh. everywhere my whole life and now she's <laughs> teaching me how to do this thing that I love. Um, it's really such an honor to have you here. Yeah, so the, the year of magical thinking, tell us about the role you play and what the show's well, about. Well, it's a one-person show. Joan Didion is an amazing writer. She's still alive in America. Mm. And she wrote the year of magical thinking after the death of her husband. Mm. He died suddenly at supper one night. Sure. And for a year... She, she, people thought she was crazy. She kept thinking, if I keep his shoes, he'll come back. Mm -hmm. We'll go to Paris again. If I don't give his clothes away. Now, that seems crazy, but I know I still have a lot of my mother's clothes. Mm -hmm. you, you want to keep something. And for her to make sense of the grief that she was going through, she started writing mm -hmm. to control it, to manage it, mm -hmm. to put it down. And out of that came this incredible memoir. 18 months later, her daughter died. Oh. And oh. then she's included that in the play, both of those losses. So we need to bring tissues. Yeah. Many. Um, yeah, I think it's touching. I definitely think it's healing. Mm. It's... Um, um, and I don't feel like I'm on my own on stage because my wonderful, wonderful director, Mark Graham Wilson, he puts the audience in the light sometimes. Oh. And that is amazing because it means when I walk on, I can make eye contact with as many people as I can. And I think if you do come, you will find that by the end of the show, you know Joan, you know Dorothy, and I know you. Wow. Well, yeah, after 200 productions, I mean, you're always looking for something new to sink your teeth into. Was there something yeah. particularly about this production that you, you felt spoke to you? I was working in New York and I was staying in someone's apartment in Greenwich Village and she was a, a proofreader for publishers. And I read 10 books in the two weeks I was there, but I would just eat them up. Wow. Um, and the first one I, I read was The Year of Magical Thinking. But there wasn't the play yet. Mm. When I heard that, that Vanessa Redgrave was doing the play, I asked a friend to send it to me and immediately took it to James Norbo at the Market mm. Theatre and said, I would love to Want do to this. Do us, yeah. It's taken four years, but here we are. That's incredible. Mm. Mm. I mean, what's it like to stand on a stage and command such a powerful story and speak to thousands of people and, and, and know that you're capturing every essence of, mm. of their thoughts, their hearts, their emotions? You know, Barney, uh, humility is so important. My matric teacher said, recognition is the consequence, never the object of a great mind. Wow. What I do before I go on is I try to leave Dorothy behind. I try to leave my ego behind. I try to, whatever I've managed to assimilate of, of Joan Didion, her gestures, her thinking, mm. her spirit, that's what I take on with me. Mm. So I don't feel like I'm commanding the stage to mm. answer your question. Yeah. I for want of a better word, try to channel her yeah. energy to help Surrender. me. Surrender. What's right. so fascinating about a conversation with somebody as seasoned as you are is that there really is a sense of humility in that. There's a love for the craft over the sort of brand building behind it. Mm. And I, I'm, I was particularly inspired by the Naledi Award that you, you won for some of the work that you were doing with people on the street. So tell me about that whole project and just really shows your love for the craft. Yes, well, seven years ago, I just started getting really upset by people driving past beggars, winding up their window, looking the other way, as if there wasn't even an animal mm, there. Mm. And I went to Hillbrow and I found that St. Michael's and St. George's Anglican Church uh, gave people a peanut butter sandwich and a cup of tea on a Monday. Mm. And I went and I met quite seven quite depressed young people. Mm. Well, they're in a range in age from 18 to 57. Um, and we've worked every Monday since. Mm. And because I, I can only share what I feel passionate about, mm. and that is voice 
and Shakespeare. Mm. I wanted them to find their voices and know they had the right to speak in a city wow. which had been very yeah. cruel to them. Mm. And I wanted to give them the richest Michelin-starred language that I could. Of course, they've now translated mm. Shakespeare into Zizulu and Koza, and so that's fabulous mm. too. Uh, and that, and they love it. So they've become very famous on YouTube. That's they've beautiful. Been, uh, they've been recorded by the BBC yeah. twice. They've all done acting in films, Akin Omotozo's Vaya. They've been on Generations. They've done commercials. And I never, and they never hoped that that would happen, but it has. Mm. So there's only one person out of the 30 that, you know, it grew and grew, who's still on the street, and that's from choice. Mm. Because Tsetse has been on the street for 22 years since he was a child. He says, I have to have the sky over my head. Mm, sure. Wow. But of 30 people, only one to have remained behind, I think is really, really a beautiful testimony to the work that you're doing. Yeah, Absolutely. and to yeah. have work and to have mm. a home, Purpose. a room, yeah. somewhere to live. Yeah. You've done over 180 shows, TV shows, theatre productions. I must have counted them up once I for mean, that number to have come that is out. <laughs> Do they all pay me? You know, <laughs> them all. What a prolific career! Congratulations, truly. Oh, Bonnie, I started very young in Durban. You know, I, I started working on the radio when I was 15. So, in fact, this is my 50th year of being paid in the business, wow. which is quite a milestone. That, that is, is it's a huge yeah. milestone. And also to still be doing some great work, mm. to be so excited and enthusiastic and so beautiful yeah. and oh, radiant. I love it. Thank I you love so it. much. So we cannot wait to see the show at the back, so we wish you all of the best. Thank and obviously, you. as they say, break a leg, and I hope it goes incredibly well. Okay, all right. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> you just have to. Mm. After the break, we head to the kitchen for a, a five ingredient cheesecake, the simplest way to ever make one. Clem has got all of those details for us, and he's told us it's about as easy to prepare as it is to eat. And we meet award winning performer artist Kumaso Potela, who just completed a successful run at the National Arts Festival in Gramstown.
Well, welcome back to Afternoon Express on this Monday afternoon. Now, one of the most delicious things in the world has got to be cheesecake. But the problem is that it's not as easy a recipe to prepare. But Clem says he's got a hack that'll have us in and out the kitchen in apparently no time in as all. And there's a real bonus to this one. And the bonus is that it only requires five ingredients. I don't believe him. Can I actually, like, blow your mind even more? Please. The cheesecake itself only has three ingredients. So what are the other two? Some little toppings that I added, but oh, essentially the cheesecake itself is three ingredients. I don't believe you, show me. All right, white chocolate over a double <laughs> boiler, which means I've got a bowl, and underneath it I've got a pot with a little bit of simmering water, mm -hmm. just simmering. That's enough heat to melt the white chocolate. Then, second ingredient, eggs, okay? Separate your eggs into yolks and two whites. But well, that makes two separate ones, Clem. I'm just counting. It's one ingredient. No, no, egg, egg yolks, egg, egg whites, when two different things. When you got things. it, was it two separate things? No, it was <laughs> no, one. Okay, fine, I'll okay. it. And ingredient number three, Cream cheese. Yummy. All right, okay. cool. So into the malted chocolate, we're going to go with room temperature cream cheese. cream cheese. While he puts that inside the dish, obviously, I mentioned that it's a super simple recipe. You don't really need to get the keyword, but if you want it, you can get it on your cell phone uh, by SMSing the keyword EAT to 33650. It'll cost you one round 50 and your free SMSs won't apply. You'll get all of these details. It's simple, but perhaps you want to keep it for yourself for records. Okay, so what I've also done with the egg whites is I started whipping them to a thick, thick peak stage. Cool. Can you just show us what, what that thick means? thick peak stage looks like? Can right. I flip it upside down? No, 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 not today. <laughs> Let's not try that. Okay, so so what is... I want you to do is kind of scoop it and kind of tilt it sideways. You can see the peaks that I... Well, look at that. We've really yeah. got peaks in the egg, in the egg whites. And, and, and the idea also, it feels like it breaks off the top. It there doesn't necessarily just slide off. So and that is that's thick peat. That, that's a thick peat stage, right. Cool. So cream cheese mixed in. No, 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 not yet, not <gasps> yet. And okay, even though it's baking, all right, three ingredients, you have to still follow the steps correctly. Okay. Cream cheese in, in with our eggs, and I'm going to take it off the heat. Real quick, and I'm going to start mixing it through. You take it off the, that so that the yolks don't cook, I'd imagine. Right, you're going to end up with like sweet scrambled egg, which is mm. not my thing. <laughs> right, get this out the way. And now once it's incorporated, you use your spatula, give it a bit of like elbow grease, mix it all in there. Okay, so this one you can get quite violent on. You can, you, nothing's going gotcha. to go wrong. Well, except if it's over the heat, you're going to end up with scrambled eggs. Then, can you start adding a little bit of your egg whites to it? What this sure. is going to do is going to lighten the mixture. Cool, so this is just a kind of, would you call it folding the stuff? No, 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 I'm not only even folding, I'm going at it. Say it's when? still going to rise in the oven. All right. How light do you want it, Tim? All of that, I'm going to add all of it. So oh, oh. six egg yolks, six egg whites, quite a bit of egg. So you get the sweetness from the chocolate, the creaminess from your cream cheese, and the body from the eggs. That's what, the eggs actually help it set. So you mix it all together. Bulking it up quite nicely, yeah. yeah. Three ingredients, mix it all together. And then you're going to put it into a baking tin, mm -hmm. and it goes into the oven in a water bath. Do you know what that means? It goes in the baking tin. Yeah, and you cover, put some... Yeah, some yeah. foil just so the wood doesn't get in there. Mm -hmm. Then in a bigger tin with some water in there. And the reason behind that is? You don't want to shock the egg mixture in there. So you can uh, gradually heat up the mixture. Okay. If it's just, if there's no water, that immediate heat gets to it and it just shocks it. Whereas if the water's in there, slowly heats up the water. It's like having a bath. I see. Yeah. So yeah, you, know, you don't know that you're actually burning. That's the kind you're of thing. Right. That don't, don't shock the poor <laughs> cheesecake. Right. Let yeah. it happen gradually. Cool, let it happen <laughs> gradually. Then, once the egg whites are all mixed in, pour it in your dish like we just said right now. Okay. It comes out beautifully. Okay, do you want to actually pour it in? No, no, I just want to show you one that is greased. That you kind of you grease yeah. the bottom of this tray, you've used a bit of your, your baking paper, and just uh -huh. like that. It's really simple to do. You've got one of those pop-out bottom pans. If you don't yeah. have one, I'm guessing you do it in any pan. You actually, you don't need a pop-out bottom pan. This okay. guy comes out perfectly every okay. single time. The one thing you do need is some baking paper on the sides, okay? Because it's going to rise because of that egg white that's in there. Ah. So, let's give it like a last few mixes. Okay. Cool. Last bit of incorporation. And then it comes out perfectly after about 45 minutes. Just keep on checking it. It sets at the end with a bit of a, a sexy quiver. Hmm. Okay. What's a sexy quiver? I don't know. Show me a sexy quiver. Just like shake it a little bit. A little bit of, there we go. Sexy quiver. Right. And then it goes into the fridge and it sets just like that. What I've done is added some caramel treat over it <laughs> and then some of this amazing popcorn. Himalayan oh, I had salt these over the vanilla. weekend. Yeah. In your fort? Yeah, in my little fort. The Himalayan hey. pink salt vanilla. I had these over the weekend. It also got yeah. the nice sort of like cinnamony one, which was delicious. It is. Yum. So that's it. That's how you just top your, your cheesecake. So essentially, three ingredients. Two ingredients just to make it a little cool. fancy. I'll give that. it to you. Five ingredients mm -hmm. it was. I wasn't going to believe you, but he said three ingredients in the cake and then obviously two on top. It's a really simple recipe to make. If you want it, you SMS the keyword EAT to 33650. It'll cost you one round fifty, and your free SMSs don't apply. <laughs> Sports.
kettle corn and quivers. It's all exciting in the kitchen. But Baxter and Donut, the newest members of the Afternoon Express family, are revealing more of their off-screen lives on Instagram. And if you'd like to see what these two get up to behind the scenes or on the weekend, head over to our Instagram and search for the adventures of Donut and the adventures of Baxter. They're cute, they're cuddly, and they're TV stars. Baxter and Donut, the adorably fluffy four-legged members of the Afternoon Express family, are sharing their daily adventures on social media. To see what Baxter and Donut get up to behind the scenes, follow the adventures of Baxter and the adventures of Donut on Instagram. It's time to meet our next guest. Performance artist Kuma Sopotela earned national fame in 2007 when she won the Florida Cup Best Actress Award for her role in the critically acclaimed Karoo Moose by Laura Foote. And today she joins us having just returned from a successful national arts festival in Gramstown where she created an exclusive piece titled In Lulamiti. Welcome. Thank you Lovely very much. Lovely to have you with Thank us. So How was Gramstown? Apparently you rushed all the way from Gramstown <laughs> just to be in the loft today. Yes, I just, I just, I just drove in now like an hour ago. Was it a beautiful Just drive? Talk about working it hard. was. I slept. I had oh. an angel driving for me, so oh, I, I could sleep so I'd look a bit better. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Not just a bit, a lot. Tell us about Karumus, your, yes. your role in it and the journey that you, yeah. you took to prepare for it. Well, Karumus was my first professional play that I did, uh, directed by Lara Foote with an amazing cast. Mm. Um, it, and she sort of launched me into the, into the industry. I mm. uh, got my first award, then my second one, and a couple of nominees. And um, yeah, it has been a lovely journey from then. So it so was yeah. a good start. It looks like Great it was one. quite physical. What, what, yeah, yeah, I was fit then. You were fit. <laughs> <laughs> I was young, I was very young, because 10 years ago. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. wow. Yeah. I'm dying to know about the journey since then, because I've watched some of your work before, and you're quite an expressive actor. You, yeah. you really enjoy t pushing boundaries and telling difficult stories. Yeah. Is that a big part of your personal journey? Is that just the roles you happen to find yourself in? Well, I started acting because I was an activist, and I was part of something called the treatment action campaign mm. and it was mm. very like in the past it was before people could come out and say I'm HIV positive mm. so we have the first young people to wear the HIV positive t-shirts and for us it was cool and mm. it was part of what we were doing mm. so it's I think it's because of that of why I started to act that it sort of followed me throughout yeah because wow. I could see what it did to change people's lives yeah and your yeah. show at the Grahamstown Arts Festival in Gulamti what's that about yeah well you also I, worked with with children yes I had been going to Grahamstown for over 10 years and uh, because that's how long I've been there and uh, every time I went to Grahamstown there were always these kids in the streets who were busking the mm. white-faced kids I would call them and I remember once working with a friend of mine um, um, and I thought I mean what would happen if we would make a show about these kids and about how now we come at night and they're still there and standing in the cold and but how they actually the whole program became now was about not just those kids mm. but the kids of Grahamstown hmm. because when we are always there in Grahamstown as artists you sort of don't see the locals because mm. you see them going around doing their own business you know but then you never see them like really taking the festival upon it like mm, themselves to, it, to yeah. own it so for me that is what this Indulamti then became um, and Indulamti is a giraffe but it also means the ones who are taller than the trees so mm. yeah. yeah. Well, what was the experience like? I mean, did you see transformation? Was there a real sense that you made an impact beyond just putting kids on yeah. a stage? Well, I was there for like a month from the 6th mm. of June and working with kids from Ntsika, uh, the choir from Ntsika yeah. High School, working with Mrs. Lumka from Evukan with her kids, her dance kids, and work with Knox also with her kids. So what, what was amazing, what was amazing, yeah, yeah, what was amazing was out of everything, like, after a few days of the kids working together is how they would now, because they'd lived in different sections of the, of the, of mm. the township, how they would run to each other and hug each other oh, because beautiful. they'd missed each other from yeah. like yesterday. Into, so for me, that out of everything, it is the love that the kids and the yeah. confidence of mm. now, they would ask, Sissy, can I sing a song? Like the show is over, but then yeah. they're like, there's still a mic there, can I, can I sing a there's song? There's still some performance yeah. in yeah. them. Yeah, yeah. Well, it sounds like you also just help them find their voice yes. as well. Yeah. 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 What, do, what have you loved most about your journey as an actress? Wow, it allows you to, to speak, to, to make a difference, mm. to change people's minds mm. Mm. and perceptions of things. And for yeah. me, this is the journey what, what theatre is about. Yeah. Um, and to learn and to you know, meet so many people. Yeah. 
you go into a project and you think you know exactly what you're doing, but at the end, something else emerges. something else emerges. And yeah. how theatre also, like my work, is just all about my life also. So. Life and work for me is just one thing. Mixed together. Mixed wow. together. You know, Theatre in Amazing. South Africa obviously was born out of the sort of protest stage of our yeah. lives where we just wanted to express what was going on and yeah. wanted to speak these truths. And you've obviously got a lot of that inside of you, this activist yeah. that just wants to share these stories. Yeah. What is your perception then of South African theatre at the moment? Has it become too glossed over and sort of lily you white? Or... Get out of the box. Yeah, you know? it, does it need um, to be shaken up? Yes, get out of the theatres actually, the buildings themselves. Okay. Leave the buildings. <laughs> I'm saying but there's take the spaces to the people, out there. You're saying, mm -hmm. yeah. There's spaces that can be, we can use to express ourselves even more, even like the skies. I mean, let's get out of the box, get out of the box, go mm -hmm. out, mm -hmm. share, speak to others. Let's not clingy. It's very clingy at the mm -hmm. moment, you know. Wow. And, yeah. um, it's trying to survive, well, I think. Yeah. Yeah, well, and we well, we're looking at how to survive. I think in the wrong way. Mm. Right. How right. to survive is to get out there and make it more accessible to people, yes. rather than trying to make it about ourselves. Yeah. 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 Your work mm. is very brave, and you make a lot of cor uh, courageous choices. Mm -hmm. Is this is this courage something that you've learned over the years, or is it something you you just arrived into this world yeah. with, with in your acting world and just thought these are the only stories I want to tell? I think every story that I come across that I get to do has something that challenges me in yeah. some way. And I get surprised at the end of the day with most of them, what I learn and what I go through. And what yeah. you do with them, I bet yeah. you. Yes. Aren't you leaving on a trip now very soon? You're yes. like, you're leaving I'm now leaving on Wednesday. Wednesday. <laughs> Crazy. I'm going to Italy on Wednesday with a friend of mine, Mutle Bezo Siwan, who's a visual artist, yeah. who was also here, I think. Yeah. And um, yeah, we're doing a show called Those Girls, which expresses how uh, the female body is looked at in most mm. European countries. So that's us. Um, we're sort of trying to change the gaze how a black body is looked at mm. yeah. and trying to say, whose story, whose story are you seeing on my body? Do you see my story or are you looking at me with your glance? Are you placing your, your gaze on me and yeah. your perception of me? Yes. Sure, that's very profound. How, did you guys write this? How yeah, long workshopped it, it. We've been doing it now for like three years. Okay. Yeah. So we workshopped it. When do we get to see it? Well, it was <laughs> part of the, we first did it for the Infecting the City yes. festival. Uh, we also did it for Ika, so it has been it has been around for a while, and we've done it in, in South mm, Africa, mm. because also we had to worry and wonder about how we looked at each other in our gaze, mm. because maybe we no longer know the difference. Maybe we are still wearing our colonizers. Yeah, normalized, mm. yeah. Yes. Mm. yeah, yeah. yeah. Your, your work is prolific and I think sure. it's really exciting to watch it happen because you are telling some of the most profound stories that I think does, just by their nature, shake things up in, in the way people think and feel. What do you want people to leave your shows feeling? Shocked or changed? <sighs> Oof. I don't, I, I don't think that there is um, an end point of a feeling. Mm. But I, I, when I, for me, uh, making a, a piece is like creating a score. And every part of that score is uh, creating a different, a shift in the feeling. Mm, mm. I always say it's like, um, it's like cooking, it's like a chef. You, you make up a menu and you give people to eat. Mm. And while they're busy enjoying it, mm, this is nice and this, mm. and then you have some bitterness in there because that bitterness is the one that changes what they were eating. Then they mm. try to start to look at it differently. What was on the menu mm. in the first place? Mm. Yeah. That's I beautiful. That. I love well, talking to you about what you do. <laughs> Thank you very much. Yeah, I think incredible. it's so beautiful to meet actresses and actors who are so passionate about telling yeah. these amazing stories. So we, we salute you. Thank you very yeah. much. Mm. So you. after the break, we turn our attention to parenting. We're joined by a dietitian, Lisa Stander, to chat about the important nutrients you should be incorporating in your kids' diet. Indeed. indeed. Plus, it's time for another installment of Mommy Mondays. Today, we're looking at the important role that an aftercare program, program can play in your child's development. Stay tuned. Wake up with your feel-good breakfast show, Espresso, to get a healthy dose of the most energetic breakfast crew in Mzansi.
That's Expresso. Weekdays 6 to 9 a.m. on SABC3. The stage is yours. Well, welcome back to Afternoon Express. It is a Monday and indeed a Mommy Monday at that. NutriKids believes in giving our little ones the nutrition that they need uh, with their wonderful range of nutritional products for toddlers. This afternoon, we chat with local dietitian Lisa Stander on the importance of giving our kids the right nutrients and how we can include these foods into their daily diet. And it's good to have you back with us in the loft because every Thank time you're you. here, it feels like we learn so much. Oh, so sweet of you to say. So today we're going to be looking through the different food groups, right? Yes. So let's get started. Absolutely. So on this side, you have your proteins with your beans, eggs, also your chicken, meat, fish, all of those would in be included in the protein section. And vital to include in a child's diet, I'd imagine. And how do you Absolutely. go about incorporating these sandwiches, stews, in any way that you can? In any way and as many as possible different ways because okay. we want our kids to be exposed to different textures and it's also mm. good for their development. So as many ways possible, basically. Stunning. Then do we stay away from carbs? Oh no, please okay. no, yeah. Variety is key, like we said. Carbs are so important for growing little bodies. Also, they need it so much for, for energy mm -hmm. and growing mm -hmm. and learning and everything. So no staying away from carbs, please. Okay, but if you are going to use rice, let's see if we use the brown rice here. So mm -hmm. the higher the GI, or lower the GI, the better, correct? Totally, yeah. Okay, but cool. especially in the very beginning, you can go normal A little rice. bit normal GIs, mm -hmm. got you. And then <laughs> fats are such an interesting one that people always tend to ignore. They feel like fat should be avoided. Oh, and that's such a common mistake. But these are all beautiful, healthy fats. We have avo, peanut butter, olive oil, and so important also for neurodevelopment. So mm. those brains need the fat. Okay. Yeah. And then also in terms of fats, I mean, you talk about neurodevelopment. Omega is always quite a big thing that's mentioned. Absolutely. Where can we get other sources of fats like omegas into our systems? Omega-3, the most amazing source would be your fatty fish. So like okay. your sardines or salmon or fresh tuna, those sorts of ones. Stunning. Okay, cool. Mm. So do not ignore the fat. Fats are really good for you, especially <laughs> for neurodevelopment. And then dairy is another interesting one, especially for young kids where you're trying to figure out their intolerances and things. Dairy mm. is such a great way to help kids grow. Absolutely. And also new research says that we need to introduce allergenic foods sooner to lower really? the risk of developing allergies. Yeah. Okay, cool. So what kind of dairies do you have here and where can they be incorporated? 
These are the milks and the plain yogurts. Mm -hmm. Great to make milkshakes with a plain mm -hmm. yogurt, you know, yes. with the seasonal fruits and getting those yeah, veggies and things we, in we there. We call them smoothie, mom and dad. Yeah, but milkshakes just sound so, so much better. yummier. <laughs> yeah. And then, of course, the fruits and veggies. Okay. Now, the, what's the most important rule with fruits and veggies? Is it diversity of color? Is it the texture changes? What should we be playing around with when it comes to incorporating fruits and veggies into our kids' diets? Mm, a colorful plate is always a sign of a healthy plate, okay. but variety. And I also think seasonality, you know, shopping in season is so important. Yeah. Mm. So you said that always, everyone always says you must have a portion of vegetables in your plate or, you know, you must have three apples a day and keeps the doctor away or something. <laughs> Do you have a specific thumb rule when it comes to kids and growing up on how many pieces of fruit they should be eating in a day and how much vegetables they should be incorporating to their diet? No hard and fast rules. Every child is different and if a child doesn't like fruit and veg at all, you're going to have a hard time getting in the, the yeah. five a day or whatever. Yes. So okay. for me it's all about just keeping the atmosphere relaxed to keep uh, help a child feel safe with yeah. experimenting with Good new cool. foods. Stunning. Lisa, thank mm. you very, very much. It's good to see that all of these different factors need to be incorporated into a diet. Your proteins, your carbs, your fats, your dairies, and then what is your fruit and vegetables. And trying to do it all at the same time, I'm sure it can be quite overwhelming. Uh, so if you want any more details, hopefully you can hop, hop into our website afternoonexpress.co.za. Thank you very, very much for joining us. My pleasure. Thanks so much for having me. Absolute pleasure. With Clover Nutri Kids, it's easy to please uh, your fussy little ones at home. With the range of tasty nutritional yogurts, uh, instant full cream milk, and three fun flavors of fruit nectar blend, Nutri Kids is set on providing a foundation of a healthy development for toddlers from the ages of around three to eight years, which is a really good for mom and even better for the kids. Nutri Kids, good for mom, way better for kids. Made with love by Clover. It's time for another informative edition of Mommy Mondays. And today the focus is on aftercare. With parents leading such busy lives, parents working, many families have no choice but to make use of an aftercare program. And while there are strict regulations from government in the school environment, there isn't anything that properly governs aftercare. And anyone can run an aftercare center. And it's important as parents that we do our research properly. And we're joined now by Janine Hammond, Managing Director at Sherpa Kids, an internationally respected and trusted aftercare aftercare organization that focuses on putting the care back into aftercare. Welcome, lovely to Hello. have you with Thank us. Thank you very Janine. much for having me. This is such an important conversation and we're not having this conversation Absolutely. enough. So tell us about how Sherpa Kids began and who designed the program. Right, so um, in 1996, um, there was a brand in New Zealand called Skids, Safe Kids in Daily Supervision. And uh, Dawn Engelbrecht went over to New Zealand. She immigrated from South Africa and purchased a franchise. Along the lines, herself and her business partner decided that they'd like to purchase the franchise rights and they'd like to branch this out into the world. And as such, we developed from SKIDS, because it's not always quite a well-known um, acronym, yeah. uh, to Sherpa Kids uh, throughout the west of uh, the world. Yeah. And that's how Sherpa Kids was born. Um, and then Genevieve Allen, who is our managing director in Johannesburg, she brought the brand through to uh, South Africa, launched late in 2013, and I've now launched it in the Cape. That's incredible. Yes. I mean, as a working mom, it's, it's just like music to my ears. Yes. And sometimes you, you, we take for granted that if, it, if the aftercare is offered by the school, it means it's regulated and For it sure. means all the right things are happening at aftercare, but you'll be mm -hmm. shocked at some of the stuff that happens yeah. at aftercare. And what are the stuff that's really detrimental that us as parents should be looking out for when we're choosing an aftercare? Well, questions you should check with is what sort of programs are they offering? Is it a glorified babysitting service, which is what it's become? Um, or do they have proper procedures in place? Are the staff criminally checked? Uh, mm. Do they have pediatric CPR training, not just level one first aid, because we're dealing with children here. Um, staffing ratios, we work on a very strict staffing ratio of one to 15, because eyes on children are important. In a blink of an eye, an accident can, can happen, happen, for sure. Yeah. For sure. So those are key fundamental things. And then um, what is the afternoon? Is it stimulating? Um, is there homework supervision? Are we, you know, are, is the aftercare marrying the ethos of the school that they're working in? Hmm. Um, so those are the, the key factors that I would think would be important for a parent to ask. Yeah, absolutely. And I mean, because the aftercare um, programs in, in this country are not regulated, nobody's yes. checking in to make sure that stuff is happening. Anyone can now start an aftercare program hmm. and in the form of just a business, a thriving yes. business. And uh, what are... What are the, some of the, the things that can happen just from a, from a legal perspective where we can make sure that we're 
going to an aftercare program that is legal. Correct. Um, look, in public liability insurance is something that is important for a business um, running in an aftercare centre to have. Um, but also things, you know, children, there was an incident, I mean, media is full of incidents that are happening to our children, a gate fell on a child. So it's things that are happening in and around. Is the centre safe? Is it gated? You know, are, are the equipment that the children using safe and are they clean? You know, yeah. there's all those type of things that, that one just takes for granted or doesn't think about, but all those yeah. things can affect the children. Yeah. You know, um, the and younger code children. Of code for of staff conduct, exactly, for staff. Or... We have very, very strict policies yeah. against bullying. We have a code of ethics. We work very much um, in line with a CEQA guidelines, which focus on seven um, behavioural um, outcomes for children, as well as quality areas, which is fundamental to running a good aftercare and being consistent in ensuring that your staff are applying and adhering to yes. those rules and the training that you yeah. provide. So things like a no cell phone policy because your eyes are on the children, they're not on your cell phone. Updating, mm. oh, so-and-so said the cutest thing at aftercare. After six o'clock is fine. Or just posting people's children online. Oh, yes. The puppy <laughs> act, please, checking. guys. It's yeah. very important. But, Don't yeah, do it's that. It's so important. Yes. This yeah. So if, if, if I, as a parent, want to access your services, how would it typically work? Would a school outsource you your program? Or are there programs that I can directly find that you offer to the public? It's a, a, a mixture. Ideally, we partner with schools. Okay. Um, and that is Model C schools as well as private schools. It's, uh, we cater to the demographic that we're working in. So it's not unaffordable, mm -hmm. which is very a very misconceived um, notion about the services that we offer. Um, so you, you could find us at schools in the area already. They're loaded on our website. Alternatively, schools would contact us and we have standalone centres but that's more towards holiday care because we offer uh, a holiday care program as yay. well. Yay! Yes. <laughs> uh, my staff don't say yay, 7 a.m. to 6 p.m. for sure, six right? weeks. Yeah. But, um, you know, they love what they do and that's that's what we, we're, we're um, very passionate about is fresh legs in the afternoons as mm. well. You're not taking tired teachers to go and look after children that they've tried to teach the whole day. Yeah. You're bringing in... Uh, people that are passionate about children, that are ready and um, engaged to be part of the afternoon with the children as opposed to just sitting there. Yeah. So, yeah, we, we're trying to change that I'm an aftercare syndrome childhood. Why aren't you in aftercare? Do you have right. any idea how much fun yes, we have? Yes, yes. So, yeah, and taking that peace of mind and giving all of that back to the parent and to the school, knowing that when they're not there, their children are safe. Right. And I, I know as a working parent, the most worrisome hours of my day are those hours when school's over, between when I'm going to see my children again. Right. Where are they? Who's looking after them? Who's fetching them? Mm. All of that stuff. Yeah. So thank you so much for joining us and thank you for thank starting you. this program. Thank you. Thank you for your time. Yes. And all the details will be on our website, afternoonexpress.co.za, about Sherpa. So we want to know what topics you'd like to, us to cover on Mummy Mondays. So tweet us at Afternoon Chat using our hashtag Afternoon Express or just pop over to our Facebook page and tell us what you want us to talk about. And we've still got a live performance coming up from Electronic Dance Trio. Good luck, so stay right there. Nutri-Kids, good for mum, way better for kids. Made with love by Clover.
Remaining finalists on Presenter Search on 3. From Johannesburg, Mosa Kaiser is an actress, radio host, and honors graduate from Wits University. I work on radio because that is the fastest way to influence people. <laughs> and I also want to change the world one interview at a time. Anything that's entertainment, that's Mosa Kaiser. It is Monday, and I'm going to make sure that you start your week on a great note. People want to see me on television because I'm so lovable, I'm so warm, I'm your friend. You want to see me again, right? You don't want to drop that remote, you want to stay with me, right? Yeah, I'm your baby. Yes, 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 yes. And if I don't win this thing, then I'm going to be a rapper. He opens his mouth, but the words won't come out. He's choking now. Everybody's choking how his time's run now. Time's out, over, blah. That, that's reality. How I spend my moments in between a series, a hike, I box, I listen to my grandfather play the jazz. I do not like jazz music. I like my grandfather. Who would talk to you? Yeah! You kidding? I have one hidden talent. <laughs> I can read into the future. You see, you, you right there, you're about to take a picture of me. There it is, post it. Add Mosa underscore Kaiser SA. Catch Presenter Search on 3, Thursday nights at 8.30 and watch the top 10 compete to become one of three new presenters on SABC3. The stage is yours. Welcome back to Afternoon Express. It's that moment we've been looking forward to throughout the entire show. After winning the summer for Best Pop Album in 2017, Good Luck hit back this year with another stellar single and are about to jet off to Europe for their first headliner tour of the continent. Here they are with their new single, Be Yourself. Free and never let a woman by. She's 
Guys, it feels like such a great message to have a Monday in. With. Be yourself, listen to some good tunes. It's amazing how music can really just change somebody's life, uh, like in just in instant like that. This is a very special <sighs> song. I mean, it gets yeah. quite spiritual it, it in does. the middle. Do you know what somebody wrote there? somebody wrote this comment on YouTube and it made me so happy. I actually read it last night. They said, um, this song makes me want to go up to random people and say nice things. Oh, wow. And I just thought oh. that if I can achieve that with music, that's like, then I'm mm. so that's happy. That's the dream. Mm. That's what it's about for us. It feels like there's always a mission behind your music, guys. It feels like there's always <laughs> something that you guys are up to all the damn time, you know? Yeah. Now it's like, let's inspire people, get them to go and be them true selves. And then what's the next journey? We're building a studio at the moment, <gasps> which is, uh, it's like probably the, the most time consuming. These gray hairs. Yeah, I'm going to grey hairs. <laughs> what hairs? <laughs> 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 uh, exactly. Yeah, it's, uh, it's an amazing project. We've, uh, we've got this facility out in mm. Capricorn Park towards Musenberg, and we're developing, a, I suppose, a sort of a creative hub where we can also just help uh, foster young talent that we see coming up and, and just have a home base where you know, the band can develop new mm. ideas and rehearse and, and write music and play and have fun. Nice and just around. like, yeah. 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 So it's, it's a playground for sure. Yeah. We've got some crazy things, and you guys are all going to be invited to the launch party. Yes. yes! We made it. Are you invited? That's the question. Is the rest of South Africa invited? You know, if you can come, if you can find us. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> find this location on a map, and you could yeah. be here. No joke, you guys. It's really cool to have you guys in the loft today to be able to celebrate you. Thank I really, you. really good luck oh, with the rest you. of this trip and this international tour. First time headlining, I'm really proud of you guys. Yeah, oh, thank, thank you, you so much. Off. Thank you. We're going to try and represent <laughs> South Africa. I'll follow the Insta stories. Fine. <laughs> you guys will join us again tomorrow for the Afternoon Express. Cook along with our special celeb guest former Generation star and media entrepreneur Tato Molamu joins us on Afternoon Express. Yeah. Stay tuned. And It'll thank be you awesome. so much for joining us this Monday. And uh, we'll see you same time, same place tomorrow. We love you. God Bye. bless. Good night. Be yourself, remember. Yeah. Do that. Made with love by Clover. Another feel-good production.